I want to introduce a little bit of new notation and vocabulary that'll help us to talk more generally about our candidates for the local linear approximation. Uh, and then I want to actually apply our definition of differentiability in a specific example. Okay. All right, so we said if I'm in two space and I have a function f of x, y and a point p naught in its domain, then I can construct this linear function, which is just f evaluated at p naught, so that's the z value at what I hope to be able to call the point of tangency, plus some change in the z. And we calculated the z by dotting these two vectors. This vector basically gives me my rates of change. That's the two partial derivatives evaluated at my point. And then this vector gives me the amounts of change, first in x and then in y. Okay. Well, I can actually give those vectors names. Okay. So if I have f of x, y, a function of two variables, the gradient of f, which is denoted like so. There's a triangle with a bar over it, because this is a vector, and then I put the name of the function. That's just the vector whose component functions are the two partial derivatives. So that would be f sub x, f sub y. Now, if I wanted to, I could write the gradient of f as a function of x and y, because of course these two partial derivatives are functions of x and y. Sometimes we simply write the names of the functions and omit the names of the inputs. Sometimes we prefer to write the inputs. Okay. So that would be the gradient for a function of two variables. Now that generalizes very nicely if I have g of x, y, z being a function of three variables the gradient of g would simply be the vector consisting of the three partial derivatives that we have. Okay. So what I have right here, this vector that is giving me my rates of change, that's just the gradient of f evaluated at this point p naught. Okay. Now what's nice about having just one name for that vector function is if I just call it the gradient at the point, which I hope will be the point of tangency, um, then I can use that name whether it's a function of two variables or three variables. If I'm writing the individual components, I obviously need to write it differently if I have two components than if I have three components. Okay. Now I can also generalize the name of this vector, which is giving me the amounts of change. Here, in this case, I said p naught was x naught y naught. Well, if I let p represent an arbitrary point in two space, which I usually do, in fact, I could write this as L of p. It's a function of a point in two space. I could actually denote this as being the vector p naught p. Okay. One word of caution here, when we were defining differentiability, we were talking about the distance between p and p naught. So we were looking at the magnitude of this vector. When I care about the magnitude, it does not matter the direction. It doesn't matter whether I'm going from p naught to p or from p to p naught. Here it does, okay? Because these are signed differences between my x and y values. So in order to get x minus x naught, I need to be pointing from p naught to p, because when I'm calculating a vector, to calculate the components, I subtract from the vector where I end up, um, and then I subtract from that the components of the vector where I started. Okay. All right. And of course, I could describe points in three space this way as well. So if I were working with a function in three variables, my point p would just be a point x, y, z, and my point p naught would just be a point x naught, y naught, z naught. It would simply have a third component. So sort of generically, I can say my candidate for the local uh, linear approximation is L of p equals f of p naught plus the gradient of f at p naught dotted with p naught p. I can use that generic form 
for the candidate for the local linear approximation of a function of two variables or three variables. Often in applications, we're going to be working with specific functions. We'll know how many components we have, and we may prefer to write things out component-wise, and that's totally fine. Okay, now, this vector that we call the gradient, you'll notice that it's in the role of the derivative. It's sort of in this equation at the same place where the slope of the tangent line, which is our derivative, is. Turns out, if a real valued function of two or more variables is differentiable, the derivative is the gradient. However, notice I said, if the function is differentiable, the derivative is the gradient. The gradient will exist as long as all of the partials exist. So I can create the gradient, and it's still called the gradient, whether the function is differentiable or not. The gradient will earn the additional title of being the derivative if and only if the function is differentiable. So the gradient is the vector that I will use in order to build my candidate for the local linear approximation if that candidate passes our test so that it's a good linear approximation then we say the function is differentiable and the derivative is the gradient. Okay, now the book will introduce the terminology and the notation for the gradient. It doesn't actually, and I'm not quite sure why, it doesn't introduce it in this section. Okay, So if you're like, wait, what's the gradient again? And you look it up in the index and you're like, but wait a minute, the index is sending me to a later section. Yes, it is. The textbook doesn't use the word gradient until a later section when we're going to sort of focus on some properties of the gradient. But since we're using it right now, I think I might as well tell you the name and introduce the notation for it. But I do want to just give you a heads up that while the book will be using this vector, throughout this section, the book, book is always just writing it out component-wise because they haven't yet taught you the nickname um, that it's the gradient. 